You're listening to Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles. I'm Frank because I have to be. Today we're doing a very special show. About two weeks ago, I attended the funeral of the mother of one of my longtime friends. She died of cancer. And it really touched me, having lost my father just a few years ago as well. My father did not die of cancer, but when you deal with loss, it's something that can affect you, things you never get over. While I was looking for people to interview for my radio show, I came across an author who had written a book on how to beat cancer, and I thought, how appropriate for the way that I've been feeling. And when I read up on this author, when I looked at the preview of his book, what an amazing telling of his story. He took what was potentially a horrible situation, survived it, and now has made it his life's work to go out there and help other people. And for that, I absolutely respect this man. His name is Robert Marchini. He is a cancer survivor and author of the book, You Can Beat Prostate Cancer. Now, at the present time, this is the number three top-selling book on Lulu.com. Marchini now runs an international prostate cancer support group called Brotherhood of the Balloon, and we're going to be talking about that later in the show. He also explains the treatment for cancer called proton beam therapy, and I really want to get as much information about this as possible. Welcome to Frank Talks, Mr. Robert Marchini. Thank you very much, Frank. It's great to be here. All right. Now, standard question on this show. Let's start off where you were born, and tell me with whatever you feel comfortable sharing, because I know a lot of this is your private story, tell me things that have happened along the way in your upbringing, in your life, that brought you to an awareness about cancer. Well, I was uh, born in uh, Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, never really uh, traveled too far from there. I've lived uh, pretty much within about a hundred mile radius of Cambridge, Massachusetts. My father was a was a police officer there. My mother was a telephone operator, and uh, we're close in this family. I had uh, um, a brother. I have a brother and two sisters, and uh, went to grammar school, high school, and college all in the um, uh, Boston area. And uh, worked in uh, chemical manufacturing for most of my career. Uh, ended my career as a senior officer in a Fortune 500 company. And um, have had a, a wonderful life. Married, uh, two daughters. Um, along the way, I was introduced to the disease of cancer, uh, as actually from a very young child. Um, my uh, I had aunts and uncles uh, that had been diagnosed with the disease. Both my parents were very worried about uh, about the disease. When I was a child, it was often referred to as the big C. They didn't even use the term cancer in my family. But I was aware of it. I did have some concerns. I had some fears about it because of relatives uh, that had the disease. And, uh, and of course, as you probably know, um, I had um, an older brother who was diagnosed with prostate cancer. My father was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And both my, my parents had colon cancer. So it's a, a disease that has certainly impacted our family. So this runs in your family, like we're talking here, uncles, aunts, runs the gamut here. Mm -hmm. And even back then, growing up in this environment, were you then very mindful of the fact that you might one day be susceptible to cancer as well? And if so, did you take any precautions? Uh, I actually didn't think much about it, um, and I don't think most people do. Uh, even though you, there's cancer in your family, I didn't pay much attention to the genetic component. I didn't certainly didn't know then what I know now. Um, so it, it it wasn't something that really crossed my mind very much. Uh, probably not until my older brother was was diagnosed with prostate cancer, and that's when it, it it really hit home. I remember reading part of your book where you talk about how. This older brother of yours that ha that really was one of the you know patriarchs getting prostate cancer and suffering, and how that affected you makes me relate to when I was taking care of my father for the last eight years of his life, 
uh, going through the same type of emotions. And uh, from the time that that happened with your brother to the time that you were diagnosed with cancer, was it was it along the lines of did you did you come across any of the symptoms in yourself that made you go get checked or what, what was what was the connection there? Well, <clears throat> my brother uh, was uh, around uh, sixty one years old when he was diagnosed. And um, uh, he had early stage prostate cancer, and uh, he did what most people do. Uh, he uh, went to his urologist. He asked his urologist uh, his advice, and his urologist suggested uh, surgery, radical prostatectomy. And um, I actually uh, uh, drove my brother and his wife to the hospital. And um, w what I saw that day, I will never forget, because he was the picture of health when he walked in the door. And then four hours later, when I was with him in the recovery room, he looked like he was near death. Um, he had uh, tubes and drains and catheters and and uh, looked very gray and um, uh, oxygen mask on his face and uh, sleeves on his legs, pumping pumping air to to prevent blood clots and so on. And um, that image is indelibly etched in my mind. And I I remember making a promise to myself at the time that if I'm ever diagnosed with this disease. I want to try to find something better than, than surgery for prostate cancer. And now, at that time, my PSA was rising, and we can talk about PSA later if you'd like. Mm -hmm. But that was rising, which indicated that I was at risk. And uh, so I was, uh, let's say, sensitive to the fact that um, I could be next. And uh, that's when it began to uh, become a little bit more uh, in the forefront of my mind. You know, when you talked about seeing your brother that way, it reminds me of how um, when my father went in for uh, open-heart surgery, and he came out of that uh, operation in exactly the same way you describe tubes and, and, and whatnot. And it's not something anyone ever forgets. You know, uh, when you said that, you know, you want to find something other than surgery, I I'm right there with you. So... Uh -huh. For the benefit of our listeners, I'd really like just to um, get some of the basic facts here. Let's talk about what is the prostate, where is it located, what is its function, just so that people who are listening, uh, they may be interested in cancer, they may be interested in learning about cancer, but they may not necessarily know what a prostate is, so if we could cover that. Sure. Uh, the, the interesting thing is, um, uh, of all the parts of the anatomy, uh, I think uh, less seems to be known about the prostate than, than probably any other part of the body. Uh, I speak to groups quite regularly nowadays, and I'll often start off my talk by asking people, um, how many people in this room have a prostate? And it's amazing uh, what you see. You know, if there happen to be a lot of young men in the audience, very few hands go up. Certainly, as they grow older, they uh, they become much more aware of this this uh, this gland. And uh, occasionally, if it's a mixed group, uh, one or two women will raise their hands, and uh, that tells you a little bit about what's what's known about this. The gland itself, the prostate, is uh, typically about the size of a walnut uh, in the average male. Um, it's a gland that's part of the reproductive system, and its function. It's located, by the way, uh, just below the bladder and the urethra runs right through the middle of it. And its function is to produce the fluid uh, that activates the sperm and propels it out of the body. So uh, it, it represents the bulk of the fluid in, in the ejaculate of a male. My next question to you, is there anything you can do to prevent prostate cancer? Well, yes, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, no one seems to know for sure what uh, is the cause of prostate cancer, but uh, we do know that, uh, for example, there is a genetic component. Um, if you if you live in North America, uh, chances are uh, one in six you will be diagnosed uh, in your lifetime with prostate cancer. Um, uh, Northwestern Europeans are in about the same category, yet Asians and Hispanics tend to have a lower incidence of prostate cancer. African Americans are probably twice as likely or